I am back with another cyberpunk video and today we cover things you might have missed from the past few days. Things from Night City Wire Episode 5 and the numerous amounts of gameplay and trailers they showcased and a few words I thought were worth mentioning from the media sources who had early access but this contains no spoilers people. Now a quick note, I am not known on YouTube for cyberpunk. I have been trying to push out content but obviously with the way YouTube's algorithm works, my cyberpunk videos never really take off. Can you help change that with this video by leaving a like? It really does help me and the channel out. Also subscribe if you're new around here and want to see more cyberpunk. So let's go. Okay so from the recent trailers I picked up on some really interesting things which not all were in plain sight. And I do know not everyone watching is a lore nerd like me, so I'll try and keep this as basic as possible. Okay, so we all know who Johnny Silverhand is, aka Keanu Reeves. Well, the first trailer we saw within Night City Wire Episode 5 showcased to us many things we haven't seen before, including Johnny with his girlfriend, Alt Cunningham. Now, we have seen a couple of pictures of Alt in the past, but nothing like this, which is great to see. For the non law nerds out there, Alt Cunningham is the girlfriend of Johnny Silverhand and, well, was kidnapped by one of the big name corporals in Arazaka for her, let's say, IT intelligence. And while this starts off what eventually leads to a war between rocker boy Johnny Silverhand and the Arazaka. Now, we all know about Alt and her past but not too much about her present day conscience as it said she was killed by the Arazaka and her conscience, so to speak, was uploaded to the Arazaka mainframe. And actually before Johnny Silverhand is killed by Adam Smasher, which we will come to in a second, Johnny manages to set her conscience free, basically uploading it to the net out of the Arazaka mainframe. So to me it's just great to see what alt looks like in game, and well we will come back to this. Okay, so moving on to Adam Smasher and his relationship with Johnny. Well, there isn't one, and it is said that Adam Smasher killed Johnny Silverhand before the Arazaka building is brought down. Now, most of us have read that law, but it seems we will see it within the game too, proven by the scenes from that Johnny trailer, which is great. Now, I speculated about this in a previous video where we saw within a first person view Johnny Silverhand, so I thought we might actually get to experience a bit of the Rocker Boys lifestyle via brain dances. Which, for the non law nerds out there, brain dances are like an interactive VR game on roids. But, guys, it actually seems that within this trailer, the snippets we do see of Johnny Silverhand within that first person perspective are our own memories which I guess is cool too, at least we get to see it, even if we don't get to play it. And that's another thing, did we know how or why Johnny was in our head previously? I don't think we knew every detail, but we are definitely connected now and this trailer confirms that. It points out that the chip is no doubt within our heads, as we initially steal a chip which could set us up for life, yet its container gets ruptured and the only way to save the chip is to insert it into ourselves. And this is how we are having his memories, and we are seeing him at Digital Ghost all over town. The chip contains Johnny. When we insert it into ourselves, it starts off this crazy relationship with Johnny Silverhand. And well, it's quite clear from the trailers that Johnny wants our help in taking down, literally gutting, Arazaka. And well, it makes sense after what they did to his girlfriend in Alt. So we work with our Digital Ghost in Johnny Silverhand in taking down Arazaka. And yeah, the footage we see of Alt and Johnny are memories in which we'll see play out in game, which no doubt builds to a story and relationship between us and Johnny. And I cannot wait to dive in. Okay, so let's move on away from this trailer and onto some of the things we saw within the gameplay trailer. So we got a glimpse at the level of customization, character customization, and progression this game will offer. And let me tell you guys, it's even bigger than I expected, and I expected it to be crazy big. For instance, we know we have five attributes. We have reflexes, technical ability, body, intelligence, and cool, all in which we can level up. But it goes way deeper than that, guys. We also get a look inside one of these attributes, and we see within reflexes, the sub-levels or perks we can continue on upgrading. We see handguns, rifles, and blades. And we see some of these branches have 20 plus perks to build into also, which is utterly crazy and amazing at the same time. And these attributes go way beyond just weapon upgrading. We have hacking, engineering, and many, many more, as you can see from this old picture in what attributes offers what perk. 
there are many, many branches here, guys. And if each individual perk has this much depth in terms of customization and upgrading, which I believe it has, this is going to be crazy. But it does not end there, people, because we also have cyberware. Now, cyberware is another massive part of cyberpunk. And well, it makes sense to have a crazy deep system in which we can experiment with also. So cyberware is defined for any non-law nerd out there as any cybernetic technology that is inserted onto or into the body to serve a particular purpose. And while what we can do with it within this game seems as in depth as our skill trees allowing us to branch out even further with technology in terms of adding weapons to ourself, mobility tech and much much more. And looking at this screeny from this trailer, it just shows how deep this is. It's crazy what options are here guys. Immune system, skeleton, operating system and much much more. And this is our body we are playing with here. We can actually turn ourselves into a 2077 Robocop if you want to. The possibilities will be there. And while knowing we have the capabilities to hack things with our minds, which includes other people, is crazy. And while we see that within the gameplay footage where we hack another person into killing themselves, which is, well, I don't know what to feel about that, to be honest. And then we have the character customization, which we already know is off the charts, to the point of us being able to even change genitalia sizes. But seeing our character inventories, and then seeing inside the tab of clothing, we truly see how much will be on offer in this game, people. And there's much more to clothing than just the look as well. It's staggering for sure. Okay, so onto a couple of things I noticed from the trailers, which I just had to include, and well, might not be interesting to everybody, but for sure they will be for some. Firstly, did anyone else spot this tank? I mean, look at the size of this thing. Now, I've seen a few concept images of this previously, but I've never seen it in game. And well, just look at the size of that thing. It's gotta be what, three cars width? I mean, do you think we'll be able to take this thing for a joy ride? Because this thing would just utterly ruin Night City for sure. But that is a big tank, people. It's in the gameplay trailer. I've got a funny feeling we may just be able to hijack that thing. But I'm also thinking at the same time, a certain level of character upgrading, probably in their intelligence or hacking, will be needed here. Also, guys, Romance in Judy seems to be like an option from this snippet from the trailer we see. Now, I know this has been a question for many. Can we romance Judy? Well, this hint, in my opinion, confirms it. And yeah, guys, if you didn't know, you can basically have relationships in this game, which is great. Another interesting thing to mention is we know Night City is a giant city. We know it's massive more so due to its verticality. But did you know it seems it can go down as well as up? With these snippets of footage we see from the trailer, where we seem to see underwater towns, which we can explore which is cool guys. Now the previous few subjects I will look more into and bring you separate videos on them so stay tuned for that. But yeah guys, underwater cities for sure is interesting. Okay, so Holly mentioned during Night City Wire 5 that certain media sources have had the game a certain while and that we should expect videos with their opinion on the game. After watching the IGN and Games Radar videos, I can say the game, as you wouldn't be surprised, seems as though it will be as incredible as you think, according to these guys. And after watching said preview videos, there are a couple of things I'd like to add to this video which obviously ain't spoilers but sum up the game we will be playing. Okay, so bugs, and do they exist? Well, according to sources, they do indeed, but there is nothing major that was seen besides the odd visual bug, in which CDPR said they are aware of and will try to iron out. And well, let's face it, with a game this big guys, visual bugs are bound to pop up here and there. So it isn't something to be majorly put off by, and that's great news. Also, the few sources I did watch and listen to said the same thing, and that was that the prologue to this game can take up to 6 hours to complete before you even get to the title card, which is crazy. And it said that this isn't just drawn out gameplay either, what you experience here sets you up for the game and it's actually action packed and fun. And while this coincides with reports, we had a while back when people played the game and said after 4 hours in, they were still in the prologue of the game, which is cool to think about. 
Okay, so lastly, people just want to cover one reference I heard about how certain things you do in this game affect the way in which future quests can play out. Now, we know there are multiple choices in terms of dialogue options throughout missions uh, that can change choices throughout the game and the way the game plays out for you. But something from the game radar preview of this game suggests it also goes way deeper. As they said, they did a mission early on in the game but didn't go back to the quest giver to pick up said currency reward, which is eddies in this game. And these missing eddies popped up in a quest much later on, which could indeed change the outcome of said quest, which was at a totally different part of the game. So while yeah, get your heads around that guys. That's crazy to think about in my opinion. And I thought it's definitely worth me noting here. But yes people, the end of the video is near. I will however take a deeper look into some of the things I've featured today and bring you separate videos on them. So stay tuned for that. Also if you made it this far into the video, you are a living legend for sure. Also dropping a like really helps me out. But guys, on that note, the end of the video has arrived. If you're new around here and want to see more Cyberpunk, be sure to subscribe and hopefully I will see you on that next one.